just two guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. All right, welcome in. Mackie and Judd, daily Minnesota sports entertainment, therapy, speculation. Um, the news of the day today on the Viking side, the tragic and sudden passing of Adam Zimmer, age 38, the son of Mike Zimmer. He was the co-defensive coordinator for the Vikings, linebackers coach on the Vikings coaching staff and Bengals for a long time. Um, we talked about that with Royce today. You can find that episode and also on Purple Daily just for just a deeper dive into that. But yeah, thoughts with the Zimmer family today and uh, we'll just await for... We'll wait for more details to come out and, and see, but um, Judd has put together for us, because we like to rank things on our show. We like to mix in what we call pecking orders. Yes, so Judd, with, in, in honor of Zadarius Smith being tied for the NFL lead in sacks, at least according to Pro Football Reference, mm-hmm. eight and a half, mm-hmm. having a, a breakout season following what looked like it might have been a career-threatening back injury. He's back to his old form. It's turning out to be one of the great free agent signings in Vikings history. And so we are tapping into our resident historian, Judd, here. Just how great of a free agent signing is it relative to Vikings history? Phil, um, refresh my memory. What did you say about it yesterday? I said it's, well, I said it's one of the greatest, I believe. I don't know if I called it the greatest, but I said it's definitely like in the conversation. He has become one of the most dominant defensive players again, which he was three years ago. Right. In the NFL. And the season hasn't played out yet. But if he keeps doing this, I mean. This is going to be great fun because I put this list together yesterday afternoon. I started to tweak it then uh, again last night. And I've been tweaking it up till just before we started Purple Daily mm. today. Um, it's controversial. Sounds like you're uncertain. Are you uh, uncertain? It's not just uncertain. It's controversial. It's controversial oh because it's so difficult. Because you know what the Vikings have? They have had a pretty, uh, especially since um, the Wills bought the team, a pretty rich history of signing players and making yeah, splash they moves. Away. They don't shy like this away. is not the Twins. Hey, Carlos Correa, you know this. This is a this is a team that when they have the cap space, they sign players. They pursue big names. They are not afraid to say, you know what, in, in a league in which we all share in the financial pie, we are going to try to be the Yankees at times. Yeah, and so. I start with honorable mentions. Oh, wow. I have three of them. The last one to me, he started off on the list. I took him off the... He started out on the list. I took him off the list. I put him back on. He's out. But it, it, but it's tough. Okay, the first one, honorable mention, Patrick Peterson. He's played really well this year. He was okay last year. Um, nice signing. But I'm very comfortable saying he is, uh, he is an... Honorable mention because I think he's playing very well in 2022. And, of course, you know, to go back, this whole list is being done because of the impact of Zedaria mm-hmm. Smith. All right? Yeah, the name was a splash year signing than the productivity, yeah. but he's also yeah. having a really productive season so far this year. Mm-hmm. Right. The productivity in 2022 has certainly been there. I think we could debate what 2021 was. It wasn't a disaster, but the team didn't play really well. Yeah. Uh, The next name is a guy who got consideration, and he was on some initial lists, I think, through the years, but just now, with how things have fallen, he's out. Uh, Played a handful of years for the Vikings, put up some big statistics, especially on tackles. Not a surprise considering his position. Early 90s free agent acquisition right after, I think, the Plan B free agency started, Jack Del Rio. Okay, wow, we're going, yes. He was a free agent signing. Now, in the 90s, the Vikings didn't have as many, but but he uh, he was, if I'm not mistaken, for quite a while, a very solid middle linebacker who had a, you know, not surprisingly, ton of tackles. Honorable mention for him. My aunt used to have a huge crush on Jack Del Rio. Oh. Like, had his football card taped to her or okay. you know, magnetized to her that was great refrigerator. Yeah. Much, like, much like our guy Dex. Jack Del Rio in his prime. Me and Jack. Great hair. Yeah. yeah. Sort of a first-class jerk in my opinion. But that's Well, then we get along great. Hard. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Same yeah. guy. Yeah. Touche. Good point. Okay, now, the controversial one before we get into the top ten list. Because this guy was back and forth for me. Chester Taylor. 
That's a, he was a good one. He was a, good he was a one, very yeah. good one. That's Obviously. what I'm saying. It's a controversial one because 2006, the year before Adrian Peterson fell to the Vikings with the seventh pick in the first round, he carried the ball 303 times for 1,216 yards, six touchdowns, and caught 42 passes. And then he teamed with AP uh, to be a very effective uh, third down back, yes. caught a bunch of passes. He was not... He was here for three years, six, seven, eight, nine, or four years, but he was a contributor. He was a good player who very easily could have made the bottom of this list, but he did not. Can I just real quick back to Patrick Peterson? Sure. Because it's kind of our, this is our, like our PFF grade day here on Purple Daily. We had Judd guess at the PFF grades. Did you guys know he is the 10th, I'm sorry, the ninth ranked cornerback in the entire league so far this season? He's having an nope. incredible season. Yeah, yeah, he's no, no question about it. He when when you target him as an opposing quarterback, you complete only forty eight percent of your passes with a yep. sixty eight passer rating. Yep, that is, oof. He did allow a touchdown yesterday. That was the first touchdown he's allowed, at least according to this is according to Pro Football Reference. So that was the first time he allowed a touchdown. But he has been mostly a lockdown. He had a great pass deflection that broke up a touchdown yesterday. Yep. He's been solid. Yeah, he's been really solid. Yeah, this is the best been... season he's had since 2018 on the PFF grades. So, yeah. boom. And, All right. and I feel like the past two games, the Dolphins game and the Cardinals game, is just absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Breaking up passes and uh, making plays. Okay, so now, number 10 on my list. A Viking from 2007 to 11. He got off to a terrible start, but actually was huge in 2009 and was very solid uh, 2008 on. Tight end, the man who showed the world... Everything he had to offer, Vasante Shanko. Wow, this is controversial already. Okay. You're putting Vasante Shanko above Patrick Peterson and Chester Taylor. Vasante had, well, well, hold on a second. I'll give you the stats. I did some research here because this list I knew was going to be difficult. Vasante caught um, 27 touchdowns and had 2,424 yards in five years here. He caught a after a bad first year because he was not good in his first year, he was pretty much a bust at that point. 42, 56 in 2009, 47, and 36 passes, and had 11 touchdowns from Favre alone in 2009. I do remember, too, just covering those teams on a daily basis as a beat writer for a different radio station. And Judd, you were out there, too. That Shanko, he had awful hands when he got to the Vikings. Just ping-pong paddle hands. Yes. Couldn't catch anything. He was bad that first year. No and doubt. he spent... It was like he was like the last guy off the practice field on a regular basis, and he would do these crazy drills where he would stand with his back up against the goalpost, and he would have an assistant coach behind him. So, so he has his back to the goalpost, and so the the assistant coach has a goalpost, and Vasante Shanko's back in front of him, and he would throw pass. He would he would yell out when he would throw a pass, and Shanko would have to like flash around 180 degrees. Yeah. around the goalpost, and, like, the ball would be on him, and it was a drill to, like, hey, you're going through traffic or you're in the red zone or something, and Favre's going to throw a missile mm -hmm. or T-Jack or whoever his quarterbacks were. Mm -hmm. So I will Not, acknowledge, yeah. the, and he was a great Roycey and Mackey weekly guest for, oh, I think, the 2010 season. He was a complete character. Or 2011, maybe it was. He was always on his massage table when yeah. he was doing his interviews. He'd just, like, have someone's elbows digging into I his. don't want to know any more than that, though. <laughs> yep. Okay, all right. <laughs> Given what we know now, don't tell me any more than that. Okay, so Shanko is number 10. Number 9 on my list. Um, signed in, in the first free agent class that Childress had, which included Chester Taylor. Number 9, Ryan Longwell. 2006 through 11. Yeah, for, the, for the most part, he solved a problem that has been a that was a problem before and has been a problem since and that is he might not have had the biggest leg but he could consistently make field goals you needed he made in his time here um on f field goal attempts 135 of 157 from 2006 to 11 he made 228 of 233 extra points his field goal percentage was 86%. That remains third all-time in team history. Uh, and he is second all-time for Vikings players in field goals made and extra points made. He did that in 96 games. Fred Cox is the leader. It took him 210 games. Yeah. Ryan Longwell brought stability to a position 
that uh, I think we wish had stability far more often in these parts. Yep, Ryan Longwell is definitely the best kicker of my life. Well, maybe Fuadravez for a couple of years or something, but like Ryan Longwell. I think Longwell's the most like consistent though through a yeah. long period of time, right? Yep, got to be. Blair Walsh had the best season. Oh yeah, the well, fifty yes, yes. But Longwell had the best stretch. They were sure. always trying to find when when Ryan was here a bigger leg. We got to have a bigger leg. Reese Lloyd was signed Reece because Lloyd? he can kick off and kick long field goals. Yeah, like, no, no, no. All right, that's number nine, Ryan Longwell. Number eight is going to be, I think, controversial. But he's been here long enough now, and he's brought stability to a position that hasn't had it a lot, again, in these parts. And that's got to count for something. And he might be ascending now. Not statistically, but he's winning games. Kirk Cousins. Woo, you got him down to eighth. A lot of people, I've a lot got of people eighth. are going to hammer you. For I this. know, I know, but I've got him eighth. There's still more, uh, there's more to be told here. And and look, I there there was a point last night, full disclosure here, okay? Because oh, again, what? controversial list. A lot yeah. of people coming for me right now. There was a point last night, I had him honorable mention. Wow, dude. I was struggling oh, with this one. Take. Here's why. Well, okay. that's, a hot, that's a hot take. Big stats, big stats, one playoff win, one playoff appearance for that contract. And yeah, and the argument you would make to, to putting him lower or putting him eighth or honorable mention, I mean, putting him behind Vasante Shanko would have just been straight disrespectful. That's disrespectful. But, you know, I know, that's it. what I, yeah. I can but the argument is it's not just how well the player performs on the back of the football card stats. It's about did that signing impact team winning too, right? Correct. And yes. his signing attributed to the rest of the roster eroding a bit and and it wasn't yes. a great fit with the coach. Yes. So in term, so in terms of like maybe Kirk Cousins is a quality player, but how does he and his contract and personality fit with the roster construction and the other contracts and Mike Zimmer, et cetera, and it was oil and water for a few years. It will always be, in my mind, unless it changes, it will always be this simple. Kirk Cousins was signed basically as a... Basically, he was taken... Kirk Kirk Cousins was taken out of the microwave and he was supposed to be an insta-Super Bowl quarterback here. And he was paid like it. I mean, 2018 was only about one thing. It wasn't about, oh man, it's going to be a lot of fun and we're going to revision this history though. Well, we're going to rebuild. Mean, I mean, it's not fair to, no, great, it is. Like, that's great why defense he was... coming off a great year as, as a team. No, he was signed to win a Super Bowl and they didn't make the playoffs. I will always hold that against him until he changes that completely. This, this list is bonkers. Or yeah. six names in, including honorable mentions, we're already just off the rails here. This is a great list. Okay. And this also depends on price points too. To your point, which will come up again here shortly. Number seven on my list, 2014 to 2019. Signed, I believe, after his first three years as a Giant. Dominant, dominant for a period of time. Come on down, Linval Joseph. Yeah. Linval Joseph um, was in a line there with with, uh, Kevin Williams, with Pat, Really in a line of just strong defensive tackle play. Really good. And and he proved to be a dominant force. And who can forget the 64-yard fumble return in 18 at Philly, in which he then used oxygen, which turned out to not be providing oxygen. Which is one of the great stories of all time. Wait, that great mask that, the it mask didn't work. that he would use? It didn't work. So what, why was he using it? No, Because he thought it did? Who knows? Anyway... <laughs> Linval Joseph <laughs> is number seven, proved to be a really good signing and really, really fit in to what Zim was trying to do at that time. That's hilarious. Great meme of that auction mask, too. On it is, yeah. It's a great oh, and he's meme. such a big man. Yeah. yeah, huge guy. All right. Are we ready for number six? Yes. Never, been, I, more this might never get, been more ready for number six. This might get the hackles up. This might get the hackles up a little bit from Phil Mack because we're going to stay on the defense side of the football. But we're going to be much more recent with it. Because number six, as good a season as he is having, and as low as the price point is, which is a fantastic bargain, is a Darius Smith. I'm not going to fight you too much on this. It's He's number been, six. It's been a half season. And 
there's some other good names to come here. All right. So so six through ten, Zadarius Smith, Linval Joseph, uh, Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins, Kirk Ryan Cousins, Longwell, and Vasante Shanko. Number five. Presented by Federated. Oh, I love Federated it. Federated Mutual Insurance oh, Company be. has been around for over 100 years, helping businesses maximize their level of success. They're all about risk management, like having a great offensive line for your business. You can find a list of all the industries they specialize in, see if your business matches up. And you can find all sorts of other reading materials and tools and things that can help your business at federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to it. protect yours. Okay, and, and just to clear one th thing up, if there are questions arising right now about this list, um, I did not include college free agents. So if you were signed, you know, UDFA. Randall, like Adam, Adam Thielen or something. Thielen, because they're on some lists. In my opinion, you had to be signed off of a team, not a college. Yep. Uh, the second thing is, in case people don't know, Chris Carter was claimed off waivers, yes. so he does not count either. He yep. was a waiver claim for, I think at the time, $100. Yep. All right. Oh, wow. Awesome. Number five on the list is a guy that uh, played for the Philadelphia Eagles, though, and was brought out of retirement as a free agent, Randall Cunningham. Yeah, oh, right, right, right. Okay. So, so, 90, so he signed in 97, out of retirement, a backup. 98, he steps in when Brad Johnson, I think he got hurt twice during the course of that magical year. 15 and one year as a starter. Randall was 13 and one, 34 touchdowns, 10 picks, passed for um, 3,704 yards, and was first team all pro. Randall Cunningham alone for that season to me is number five that was a ridiculous season just and it kind of came out of nowhere right and it was played up that he was on it and he was like had a second job or something in 1997 and like they, selling pools or something like uh, i think it was something like that pools yeah in okay. vegas vegas and then he has this magic season and then they bring him back in 1999 and he was terrible it was oh, awful. so he just had this crazy season on an island and that was it. He had the early the early '90s Eagles run, which was yep. also one of the more underrated runs of a quarterback in NFL history. Yep. And then he had the '98 Viking season. Uh, it's what a, what a weird and amazing career in some ways. Offensive Didn't, player of the sorry. year too, right? Offensive player of the year, I think for in oh yeah, I, th I think he was he was he was, MVP, he was an off. MVP. I think he finished. Terrell second. Davis might have been the yes. MVP in '98. Yes. Uh, and and if I'm not mistaken. When, when he when he got lifted for Jeff George at Detroit at a halftime in 99, Mike Morris has told us that Cunningham asked out. Yeah. Oh. He's like, I can't play anymore. Can't do it anymore. I'm, I'm good, guys. Imagine that. You're coming off. You're 13 and 1 as a starter, and you're like, can't do it Denny, I'm, I'm out. Can't All right. Make the throws. Number five is Randall Cunningham. Number four, we're going to stay in the same bin, although this guy was toying with retirement. Whoa, whoa, oh, yeah, whoa. Breaking news, breaking news. Okay, uh, let's fly through the list, and then we'll okay. do a separate Vikings trade episode. Oh, okay. very nice, very nice, very whoa. nice. Whoa! So keep keep going or no? <laughs> keep going. Uh, fly through it. Rapid fire. Okay. Fly through it. Fly yes. <laughs> go, Brett go, go. Brett Favre, number four. <laughs> Pat Williams, number three. Steve Hutchinson, number two. Antoine Winfield, number one. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Brett Favre. <laughs> Brett Favre, number four. Pat Williams, number three. Steve Hutchinson, number two. Antoine Winfield, number one. Yes. We can stay on this for a second. I mean, we'll, we're, yeah. it's, the Vikings just traded for TJ Hawkinson. So we will, we're going to do a separate emergency Purple Daily there. But, nice. um, oh, wow. I love this list, dude. I don't know. Can you give me your logic for Winfield number one? I'm not fighting it. I just think it's. I think. I think a lot of people would put Steve Hutchinson. It's very close with him and Hutch. But I mean, but, Favre being number four is even controversial because yes, a lot of people might say that that's the num that's the number one. Yeah, right? Favre was one year. That's why uh, Pat Pat's presence formed the Williams Wall, which was the basis of a defense that you couldn't run against for basically yeah. three years. Hutchinson was was. I thought about him at one. But Winfield played here an extended period of time. I, I think that he is a borderline Hall of Fame player. And at the end here, he defined the nickel corner spot, which now is basically a starter. Yeah. Uh, and Antoine's ability to be, for his size, to be a, a basically hybrid cornerback 
linebacker because that guy hit and he hit, hit hard. Um, I'd give him the nod. If there was a second choice, though, Hutchinson to me. Favre is a great year and great fun, but it, it wasn't extended en enough. And personally, separating Cunningham from Favre, in my opinion, is a little bit difficult. Yeah. Yep, dude, this is, I mean, think about this list. Winfield, Hutch. Big <clears throat> signings, man. They do splashes, it. Splashes, man. And then there's trades, too. Like, Jared Allen was a trade. Oh, God, yeah. Warren Moon in the 90s was a trade. Yep, they make splashes. Uh, Cunningham. Yeah, so so just to put a bow on this, my guy is Darius Smith. Has some work. It's hard to fight any of these, but if, if he finishes the season like this, then there would be a discussion about whether he could start to pass some of these other guys. But some of these guys are longevity, too, like Winfield, Hutch, Pat. Like, that's longevity. Mm -hmm. So, good stuff, man. Great list. That's Judd Zolgad's top Vikings free agent signings. Thank you, Warner. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Controversy. All right, we're going we're gonna to pause here, probably give you an emergency Purple Daily. Um, I've, also, I've also been notified by Randy and Cottage Grove that he does want to do a stud stable today on Mackey and Judd, so we can, we'll negotiate with him on timing for that. But Okay. All right. Nice. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, just uh, we need to go grab a brown paper bag and breathe into it. We'll be back. Woo.